It's holiday time here in America. It's time for Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa, and all the other special holidays. And that means bringing out all the family decorations and the family traditions. But for Italian Americans, it means thinking about Italian holiday traditions. But what are they? Hmm, a pine tree all covered with pizzas? No. How about a tree covered with strings of spaghetti, with meat bulbs? I don't think so. Actually, each Italian child gets a gift on Christmas Eve after midnight from baby Jesus when he appears, when he's born in the crib in the manger. Oh yes, manger scenes were invented in Italy by St. Francis of Assisi. And many Italian families in Italy, they make their own manger scenes by hand, making them bigger and more beautiful every year, adding details from their own towns too. And of course, there's the food. 12 kinds of fish on Christmas Eve and tortellini in brodo on Christmas Day and all the other wonderful foods, including biscotti and panettone. But one Italian tradition was left back in Italy. It's about Italy's other gift giver. Italy's 12th night gift giver, La Befana. He's a woman who visits Italian children, not exactly on Christmas, but on the eve of January 6th, 12 days after Christmas, when the three kings arrived at the manger with their gifts. Well, Befana is largely absent from our American home. Oh, but wait, here's Befana in our house. Oh, these children and I haven't forgotten you, Befana. Oh, you look poor and old. Not at all like a jolly Santa Claus. You're about as opposite looking from a Santa Claus as anyone could be. And because of how you look, which isn't your fault, some of your neighbors thought you were a witch. Oh, and they were not always kind to you, were they? No. Oh. And that's what gave you this look on your face, I bet. How sad. Well, and that's why some people even called you names. But everyone will find out the whole truth about you if they listen and watch, right? Mm-hmm. Befana was born a long, long time ago, over 2,000 years ago, in Italy. But this story begins in another part of the world, just across the sea from Italy, just out of sight of the camel path between Jerusalem and Bethlehem, where Bethana had gone to live. Well, later in the story, she magically returns to her beloved Italy. Oh, yes. And you'll find out how if you listen and watch. Would you like me to tell you Bethana's whole story? OK, I'll tell it in English. And then when it's all done, I'll tell it again, but in Befana's own language, in Italiano. Well, because it's only fair to tell an Italian story in Italian, too. Well, when you listen to the Italian Befana story, after a couple of times, you'll actually start understanding Italian. And understanding other people's languages is a very beautiful thing. Well, all ready for the story? Because here it comes.
Here's Befana's whole story. A little old woman, quite famous. I worry to see her. She gives me a scare. But in her heart, she's the fairest of the fair. Her nose is long, shaped like a hook. Her arched chin, it's too close. Just take a look. Although she wears a pitch black cloak, when it rains, she still gets soaked. Her hair is long and ashy white, all disheveled and all a fright. To keep her company, a cat. And a bird who wasn't fat. Honey colored was the cat. She named him Soldier. Now, what do you think of that? The cat sat guarding at the door. And when he wasn't sleeping, he paid attention even more. The little bird stayed in the nest, and when she wasn't sleeping, took care of all the rest. The young bullies would come out, and when they saw Befana, they'd laugh and shout. Befana, Befana, how ugly she is. There's worms in her pasta. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> Befana, Befana, she's a nut. Nasty and old, she lives in a hut. Yes, Befana has a modest home. But at doing chores, she's a regular drone. As you will see, actually, this story goes deep, as deep as can be. Her house is always clean and neat. Night and day, she was busy on her feet. She washed and she cleaned. She swept and made things gleam. To her home, she was dedicated. It protected her. The house reciprocated. I clean and I clean, but the end is never seen. I clean and I clean, but the end is never seen. I clean and then I clean, but the end is never seen. Fearful folk in a rut sang out, How ugly! What a witch in a hut! Fearing something, but who knows what? When they saw her, oh my, at the top of their lungs, what a witch! They would cry. On old jugs they drummed, blasting trumpets ad nauseum. Bringing earthenware bells until they were numb. She ran away, extremely scared. Such torture, poor Befana declared. She ran away terrified. Such torment, our Befana cried. With her heart in her throat, home Befana would race and lock the door to her humble place. 
Jones. With her heart in her throat, Befana would run, locking herself in till the fear was all done. A while later, Befana goes into the garden. She's caring for a baby plant. And near her bending body, a boy sneaks up and splat! Fresh mud comes sailing through the air. Splat! Her cloak is soiled and so is her hair. What a shame this child's game. Splat! Mud in her face? Bad boy is he mortified and muddy back into her house she flees <coughs> but that night something was not right the moon where is it the night's not a bit lit where is the moon? In a cocoon? There is a darkness, blacker than black. There's an air of mystery around her shack. What's the weather? It's already cold. It is frostbound, we've been told. There's a thick, thick darkness all around. The air is hushed without a sound. Befana murmurs, there's no more wood. I'm really tired. But I'd go if I could. Olives and bread, her dainty spread. She's serene now that she's been fed. All of a sudden, a knock! The utter silence received a shock. No one visits Befana ever, so the knocking frightened her altogether. She moves towards the door mincingly. Her hand covers her face protectively. She cracks open the door and peers outside. A light of a thousand colors floods her eyes. Colors all starry, a brilliant sight. A garden all glowing with jubilant Wasn't it all like night? It seemed like noonday. It was so bright. Coming from the darkness of her hut behind, her eyes aching from the light, she became blind. didn't recognize a word. We have come from a far-off land. Befana 
Nana couldn't see, and she couldn't understand. Am I dead, or am I alive? This person here, from where did he arrive? Her eyes were very delicate. But little by little, they got used to it. Who were those people there in front? They seemed so rich and elegant. Of men, there were three with rings. These three must be kings. But what do they want of me? She mumbled to herself uneasily. One of them asks about a special baby. Oh, where, oh, where, oh, where is he? 